Oh, the, and I'm looking at you. Yep. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Yes, unless you okay. need to like talk to someone no. in the camera, then just look <laughs> right into it. You want to send a message? That's how you do it. Okay, I get you. Talk you. To Barry about the size of the yeah, the little. Yeah, tell like Barry that. how you tall know you I think the. You know, I was teasing him. I already, yeah, I already teased him about that. Oh yeah, you know that wasn't. Come on, man. Y'all know me. <laughs> little fella's getting teased. All right. <clears throat> oh my God, I love how you just said big fella. Yeah. Big fella, little fella. He's uh, a he's a, he's a little. little fella. B- there you go. There <laughs> yes. you go. There you go. Little big fella. Little big fella. LBF. I love that. Yeah. Little My big fella. like, I really want to know if you've always been big fella or like ten year old Lomas. Were you little fella at one nah, point, or were you just massive all the time? Chunky. It was the. Uh, oh. yeah, it's kind of chunky Lomas. Okay. Yeah. So I was the chunkster. Yeah. Interesting. Little weight, you know. The extra jawbones, Love that. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Guy that like to sit in the kitchen and finish his plate. I was the guy, the last person at the table. That's because you get everybody else's leftovers too. <laughs> Anybody else left anything over? See, that's the secret to being a big fella. They think right. we eat slow. No, we eat you slow on get purpose. Oh, right? You want everybody else to finish up, and anything they leave, you get the you know smorgasbord the leftovers. So you've leftovers. always been big mm-hmm. fella. Yes, I've always been the big. I don't know what happened, Danny. And you look at some of my little pictures, even from the age of five. And I'm the, I'm the mutant of the family. All my brothers and sisters are way down here, and it's like me, the milkman. Wait, I don't know. How tall were the parents? Parents weren't tall. Okay. I got it from my granddad. My granddad was like six five, so it just skipped over. And this is the same thing happened with my son. Mm-hmm. My son didn't get any of my size, but my grandson. He is huge. No. For 11 years old, he's probably hitting me like right here at 11. Oh my so god! So he got all the size. Yeah, that's crazy. I know it is crazy how it just skips over generation. And of course, my son is upset with me because he didn't tipped. get my size. But I told him, look, it's only 50 percent of the DNA I can control. You know, you got to right. talk to your mother too. Now she might have hurt that curve. So oh, don't put know. this on. I'm on sorry. I, had I to can't put it believe on you're going to do that right somebody now. Somebody got to take the blame. Oh my gosh. Okay, did you raise how many one son? How many how many So kids? I got five kids. Yeah, so four girls and one son. Yeah, so he's like he's second to the last. Okay. So I'm starting off from age thirty seven. So I got a thirty seven, thirty five, thirty three then I have the 23-year-old and the 21-year-old. Oh, so, my gosh. Yes, I know. I know. I know. I was, you know, well, we'll leave it at that. Okay, yeah. say less. <laughs> so, but first. Then he's like, say yes. Okay. No, say less, <laughs> yeah. quite literally. You didn't technically graduate from Florida when you no, left, right? right. Okay, exactly. you came back and did it. But when you left Florida, then you had your first Yeah, one. I had her because my draft day picture, I'm taking the picture with her in, <gasps> in my arms. And that was in 1985. So, oh my gosh. yeah, it was, and it was so different. The draft, the yeah. process, just everything was different back then. But that's the one thing that I have that I cherish because, like I say, she was my firstborn. And then it was just a special moment to get drafted mm-hmm. and get into the NFL. So, it, it was all nice. It was real nice. I love that. You mentioned how different the draft is. In what ways stick out to you? Most? Oh, my God, Danny. So, they, again, they had you going to New York, but they didn't have as many guys go to New York okay. they might have had maybe five guys that went to New oh. York back then yeah so it I was gonna say there's not like a ton like there's like 30 or so <clears throat> yeah oh but yeah like, it's a lot that's I mean, a lot more yeah if they know you would probably going in the first 15 20 mm-hmm. they're probably trying to get those guys there but back then it was such an unknown and you went yes well no i didn't oh. go i stayed home i didn't go. Rude. it was so early in the morning too when the draft started i don't know what time the draft starts now so but we it's started, in the evening on the first day see so we started at nine in the morning when back in 85 the draft started and remember back then we had 12 rounds so it's not the six rounds that they have now so we had 12 rounds so they had to get through all those yeah so that's why we started so so early in the morning and everything so the good thing for me the lions drafted so high that year i think i was drafted by maybe like 10 30 i was already drafted so i just felt bad for all those guys that had to sit 
and wait and wait and wait. And it's not like how it is now. You know, they would have so many guys get drafted in a day and everything, and you would have to just sit there and wait and everything. And, of course, communication wasn't like it is now, where it's instantly where you know you yeah. have to sit by your phone, oh, wait you, for a phone call. People on Twitter probably know before you yeah. know when you're getting drafted <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, you're right. Wow. Okay, yeah. so were you invited to New York or no? No, so I wasn't invited to New York. So I think Bruce Smith, Bill Frelick, and probably a couple of other guys yeah. like Max like that. Yeah, he's a Pittsburgh. Yeah. But yeah, but that, it was probably like those five to seven guys that wasn't wow. invited and everything. Of course, I watched it on TV and, you know, got to see them call my name. Um, that was Roselle back there, Commissioner Roselle mm-hmm. called my name and everything. And it was a great moment. It was life changing, Danny. It wow. really was. It was life changing because where we grew up at, it wasn't a great part of Miami. And my dad was a construction worker. My mom worked for a medical supply company. So they always gave us what we needed. Yep. You can always get what you wanted but we always had what we needed Mm -hmm. so you know it was just great to be able to help my family out get them out that neighborhood and move them into a better native neighborhood did you move them from miami because you're here now in detroit yeah no they stayed in miami i just moved them out of the rough part of miami and moved them in another part plus my dad he didn't like the cold those was floridian so yeah they didn't really like the cold so they wouldn't come up after say october (gasps) they would watch the games on tv because it was just too cold for my dad to come up i guess that's all right yeah how many siblings did you grow up with so it was just me my brother, I got two brothers and I got a sister. Okay. Uh, I got an older brother, then it's me, then I got the younger brother and the younger sister okay. over there. So we all grew up in Miami down there. I love it. Yes. Did, did you ever go back to Miami after you were drafted to Detroit? Yeah, I did. So, Danny, so how it worked out, I got drafted in 85. Uh-huh. I'm telling you, man, if we knew we were out, the season was over with, like three, three or four games before the season end, you're getting your lights turned off, you know, you're getting your bills transferred, you're getting all your furniture taken out, because you know the season was over with. Yeah. So my first two years, man, I would shoot back to Miami as soon as the season was over. Yeah. I'm like, man, I can't deal with this cold. My third year, I decided, I said, okay, I'm going to just stay up here during the off season just mm-hmm. to see how it is. And I've been here every since. I mean, I love Detroit, love the area. I mean, it's just so much to do here compared to Miami. The people are really? so there. Di- yeah, the people are so different here yeah. than it is down south. I, I mean, this is home for me now. Nah, I'm I not know. going back down to Miami. I turned in that Floridian citizenship. Now I'm a Michigander. I'm a gander for life. <laughs> Where was your first apartment or home when you were It was uh, Kings Cove. I remember okay. playing this day, Kings Cove out in Rochester. Chester Hills, Michigan, and they actually had a bet on me, which I didn't know that the first day of snow, they bet whether I would be able to get in to practice (gasps) that day. Good thing for me, Kevin Glover, one of Mm -hmm. my best friends, he's from Maryland. We were rooming together, so he was used to the snow. I wasn't. I remember waking him up at like four in the morning the first time it snowed shaking him waking him up glove it's snowing out here man he looked at me like man what the hell why you waking me up about that i'm used to snow i Uh see this all the time but for me it was like wow man snow you know so it was awesome and everything but i did win the bet i was able to make it in that day oh my god what were Mm -hmm. you driving Back then, I had my little, I had a little minivan, so I, I Astro van. Six over. Yes, I had my Astro van, but it was a conversion, Danny. So I had the TVs in the back. Oh my! I had the VCR in the back. A you VC- know, I, oh you had yeah. a phone up by yeah. the driver's seat. Well, you know, too, didn't back you? then it was the big bag phone. You know, yeah. back then early. I remember my mom yeah, having one. <laughs> yeah. I was alive for about one year of that. <laughs> And then it went away. Yeah, so we had that. But I, I enjoyed my van. It got me from point A yeah. to point B. Okay. Yes. When did you meet uh, Mrs. Lomas? So, actually, we met because I owned the store. I had my own. Yeah, I was like the first smoothie guy. So, you see Smoothie Kings yeah. around here? I had the first smoothie store around in this area. Smoothie was, Keen or yeah, a smoothie so store? So, mine was called uh, Smoothie. Oh, uh, Sports smoothie. 
Okay. And basically, I had all the vitamins. You had you had all the supplements you can want. I had in my store, and then I had a smoothie bar in the back, so you could go back there and get you a smoothie and everything. So you know, shop, get your supplements, go in the back, get you a nutritional smoothie to leave yeah. out with. Yeah, my my logo was this. It was just an arm with a was muscle it your actual arm. arm? I wish it was. Oh, I can't take credit for Ugh. that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. What year was it? While you're a player after. After yeah, playing? so like, it, it was while I was playing. So I opened up the shop in 92 um, and had it all the way up until uh, my third year with the Arizona Cardinals. So okay. that was like 99. I had yeah. I even kept it after I left right. Michigan and everything. But I had a good friend of mine that was running the store for mm-hmm. me. So that's where I met my wife at. Uh, she worked for me and stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, you know, we ended up, you know, liking each other. I was like, yeah, yeah you kind of cute yeah, there i like, I like you. you you like me this yeah let's hook up and it's been ever since yeah <laughs> Aww, yeah. I love, yeah i'm glad she goes to games but like yes. you said you gotta convince her a little bit now uh, yeah, which so, i feel yes it's, it's a lot of football i mean because you know we have to leave early in the morning and you know yeah. she don't be wanting to get out of bed no. to get dressed to come down especially here. in winter kind of, no. yes thank you danny that's becoming an issue too with exactly. the cold yes i agree um okay i want to go back to you making your way to the University of Florida, mm. where you played with somebody that I know. Oh, wait a minute. So I was wrong. You it were wasn't wrong. the University of Michigan. It's the University of Florida. Yeah. So I interned at the University of Michigan, and mm-hmm. lo and behold, you know who the video coordinator was? Oh, there? yeah. Phil Bromley. Phil Bromley. Oh, my your God. Your center. That's my who helped guy. you helped you yes. form the Great Wall of Florida. Yes. Oh, my. Which I just learned I today. I should have guessed that. I don't know what I was thinking about. Because he's been there forever, forever. right, Danny? Yeah. I didn't know I was in the midst of greatness yeah. when I was there. <laughs> I had no That's idea. That's my guy, man. Love some Phil Bromley. Yes, yeah. man. And he was awesome. He was an awesome player. Two-time All-SEC, All-American center he was great man just a great guy we keep in contact i hadn't talked to him and probably it's probably been a little over a year since Uh i talked to him but just a great great guy man one of my best friends oh my god i forgot i wasn't thinking danny yeah i read that and i'm like there can only be one Phil Bromley. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I Googled it. I'm like, no Yes, way. Pensacola, Florida. He's from Pensacola. Yeah, really? he's one of Pensacola's finest. Oh, yes. my gosh. Yes, Phil Bromley. Oh, my goodness. I forgot about Crazy. Phil. Crazy. Yes. I love that. No, just reading, like, just all of your accolades, there's a, there's a lot. But I got, like, just chills just because of how awesome they are, how impressive they are. So, I mean, just to name a few, team captain for Florida, first team, all SEC, first team All American, winner of the Jacobs Blocking Trophy, best blocker in the SEC oh, yeah. <laughs> during your senior year. You guys helped form the Great Wall of Florida, um, and then you were recognized as a Gator great my birth year yes. in 1995 Thank you. for one of the greatest Thank you. Um, Gator players ever. So they have you at number eight all time Gator player. Oh wow! Okay, Did you know they that the big fella. I didn't know they had the big number fella eight. like that. Wow, like that's up there. Okay, yeah, that is kind like, of up there for the big serious. fella. Yeah. <laughs> um, <Daddy is laughs> that's crazy so then it does say you went back yeah I had to read a lot there's a lot of, I like reading about you Lomas yeah. however it says you went back and got your degree yes. so what happened so that was mom that, that yeah. was my mom and that was a promise to my mom Aww. but then I'm gonna I'm a back up a little bit okay. so like I didn't play football. My little brother was the first one to play football. I thought them dudes was crazy, crazy. out there. Yeah, I'm like, man, all that running, they hitting each all other. So I, I stayed away from them. So I was in the band. I played the trombone. So I was in the band all the way up into high school. Uh-huh. And my first day of high school, I went in and I registered for classes. And I was coming out the auditorium and somebody was like, hey. So I turned around. And I didn't know it, but it was the principal of the school. So he called me over to him. He was like, did you sign up for varsity sports? And I was like, no. So he just grabbed me by the arm and took me back in the auditorium. And he signed me up for varsity sports. So I'm still, I'm not knowing what that is. It was the last period of the day and find out that he signed me up for football. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like the type of person, I'll I'll do things, even if I don't want to do it, I'll do it because I don't like letting people down. You little people pleaser. I know, exactly, Danny. I didn't want 
want to go, but I'm like, man, I can't let this man down. But he pulled your arm out and it was like, you must go sign up for the sports. What were the measurables yeah, freshman I know. year so of high school? I was 6'3", but I was only like 190. My 10th okay. my grade year in high school, so I was like 6'3". So he must have seen something in me because, like I said, I was wired thin, but I had a little height on me and everything. Yeah. So he signed me up. So I went out there the first day, and it, it was rough. But I went out there the second day, went out there the third day, and as they say, the rest was history. I mean, I just grew to love the sport. And like I say, that was my first year playing any organized sports was my 10th year in the high school. But I think that kind of helped me a little bit because, you know, you hear about so many guys from little talking about what they want to do. I'm going to college. I'm going to the pros. You know, but with me, it wasn't like that. You said no expectations. Exactly. I was just letting things happen. And they happened. And like I say, everything just kind of stacked up for me the right way. And that's the the way I've been living life the whole time if it's meant to be I think I'm gonna be in the right position to make it happen and that's how that's how my whole career has been basically you know from high school up wow yeah so was the younger brother a little bit jealous that you went on no he was he was kind of crazy my little brother he's touch (laughs) he's a little touch Danny so he's a little off so yeah so he's a he he's a you know we need like a whole nother segment okay my little brother yeah yes a whole nother segment all right yes oh my gosh so (laughs) Was Florida the first college offer? Did you know what that was at the time, college recruiting? Actually, yes, and I'm going to tell you why. If you ever seen that 30 for 30, the U, that mm-hmm. the ESPN made, yes. it's called the U. Yep. That was right in, I was right in the center of that. That's when Coach Howard Snellenberger told his recruiters to start recruiting in the city. Before then, Danny, they wouldn't even come in the inner city and recruit kids out of the inner city of right. Miami, which was crazy yeah. to me. They would go everywhere else. So when Snellenberger got there, he mandated that his recruiters go in the city and start recruiting us kids. And that's where that 30 for 30 came up at. And Danny, I'm telling you, every day, it was either a University of Miami recruiter at the high school or at my house. Every And they were kind of pressuring. Oh, it was yeah. almost like the pressure te- tactics to get you to sign there. But what happened to me is... I started running with the wrong group of guys. Mm-hmm. I admit, okay. for a week, I didn't know, even know who I was. I'm serious. I started doing stuff that was I, I didn't even know why, Dan. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even tell you why I was doing some of the stuff. And then one night, I just said to myself, if I don't get from around these guys, I, nothing's good is going to happen. Yep. And that's when I decided to go to the University of Florida okay. because I knew if I stayed at the University of Miami, they would have access to me. But if I went to Gainesville, which is five hours from Miami, it would take some effort for them to get up there. So that's why I left. Now, that wasn't favorable with my dad. My dad, because really? Coach Snellenberger had my dad hook, line, and sinker. My dad thought I was signing with the University of, of Miami. And when I didn't, my dad, if you look at my scholarship today from Florida, it's only one signature on there. It was my mom. My dad refused to sign my scholarship because he wanted me to go to the University of Miami. And he had, so my dad, he grew up in Tallahassee. Mm-hmm. So he had, if we go oh, back. he's a big Florida State. Well, no, but he had some bad, you know, being black back okay. in the 60s and the 50s. So he had some bad thoughts about that area where okay. Gainesville was. He had a lot of problems and everything. And it wasn't, it wasn't you know, back then, it wasn't integrated like it should have been. Because mm-hmm. you're talking about the early 80s. So integration was happening because of the college there. But the surrounding city, the little counties, all the little neighboring stuff, they were still, they weren't willing to change. So you still had a lot of racial stuff. So that's what my dad remember growing up. And he didn't want me to be part of that. Mm -hmm. That was one of his real big reasons for me not going up there. But that turned out to be the best thing that happened to me. A college town that's slower. Like I said, I'm not in Miami where it's full speed ahead all the Mm -hmm. time. It was the best decision I think I made. So were you committed to Miami then? 
Or did you I actually... never committed to them, okay. but they thought they had me. They I was going to really say, you said did. you left Miami. I'm like, oh my God, yeah, were you there at any yeah, point? Yeah, they really did. I went, mm. my official visit was there. Yeah. I took I took all my official visits. Max are like this too. It was University of Miami, University of Florida, University of Pittsburgh, University of Oklahoma, and Ohio State. That was what I know. I got a quick story about Please, that. Sorry. This will cheer you up a little bit. Okay, cool. I went there that weekend. It was nine degrees. I'm from Florida. What weekend? Danny. Was this the Michigan? The, no, weekend? no, no. I just went on the official visit. Okay. It was nine degrees. Yeah. I'm from Florida, like Miami. Nine, nine is honestly very. Uh, oh my God. I'm even like, for Ohio, like how Ohio. How do people survive in this? So. I actually, you'll be a little upset with this. So I was supposed to visit the University of Michigan that following week. Right up the street. I know. I called Bubba Paris because he was my recruiter. I told Bubba, I said, Bubba, I'm sorry, but I can't come. After the nine (laughs) degrees in Columbus, I'm like, Great, so the Buckeyes ruined it. Dad, I... So I told him. Of course, I heard some choice words back from Bubba. Really? So we yeah. Words we can't repeat unless it's just not some PG. Sassy yeah. Oh, he was upset at me for not going, but I was like, Oh no, it's no way. I'm sitting up in this nine degree. It was terrible at Ohio State. It was terrible, Danny. So again, wow. those were my official visits, and mm-hmm. I ended up going to Florida. Oh my gosh. Yes, D- okay. Sorry. You said your dad didn't sign your scholarship letter. Did he know why you didn't want to go to Miami? No. So that was kind of like my little, I know, that was kind of like my, because, you know, they they didn't know I was wild and out. They didn't know wild and I out. was, yeah, because they it's, So you were a high schooler probably hanging out with college I, students. Yeah, then some of my homeboys from Miami. Look, I had one homeboy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you ever seen the movie The Bad Lieutenant. No. I want you to watch that movie. It's The Bad okay. Lieutenant. He right, was a yeah. lieutenant that, he was a drug dealer, gambler. Uh, drug addict. He did it all. I had a homeboy who worked for the police department. He was the same way. They would go around robbing drug houses. And oh, stuff. He no. was the police, but they would go rob the drug houses Heck. in there. So and that, like, yeah, no. and I'm running with him. So like I say, I wasn't running around the right guys okay. I needed to. That's why I had to the get out of The fact that you realize that at what? 17, 18 Yes. Years old? Uh, Danny, you're right. You're yeah. right. But I could, I could see it. I could see the city could consuming me and I had so many other examples of guys that were great athletes that didn't make it because of stuff they did outside of the field yeah so So you never told your dad no never (laughs) never told pops I kept that one oh my gosh did you tell your mom no didn't tell her either that probably would have broke their hearts too oh their little baby because I was my mom's baby I played till I was 39 she would come to football game don't you hurt my baby I'm like mom I'm 39 years old you know but with your mom you're always their baby you know a 39 year old baby could you see that rocking the no and I looked I looked at your Florida picture huh your florida roster that's a picture. young fella that's a young big fella there. i was gonna say that's a yeah. big fella <laughs> <laughs> i know i do this looks Danny, nothing like you i know i know i was like <laughs> we can hello everyone and then, danny what i don't understand about that picture is the look like i got the eyes like i'm looking like i don't know uh, yeah. it's honestly the stash for me yeah <laughs> the dirt diggler is, is that girl? what you guys call? <laughs> That's what I call my guy Neil has one of those. Neil, Neil yes. has one. Yes. He's shaking his head That's no. Him. You have one, Neil. <laughs> um, yeah, this is crazy. So you didn't look like this when you were a 10th grader being no. recruited by your school principal. <laughs> But it's not very many years off, which is the most insane yeah, thing. Yeah. What were you eating to get to this big fella so, status? So, Danny, when I got remember 190 when I left high yep. when I left high school, I was 245. When I oh, my first year okay. at Florida, I was like 265, 270. Oh, they was packing it on. And remember now, like I said, you know, we had everything that we needed, yep. not everything that we wanted uh, growing up. Yeah. So just think about going to a smorgasbord of food that oh, you yeah. eat as much much as you want some good food all day every day in college oh yeah i blew up oh, oh yeah gosh. i was i was on that meal plan pretty serious danny but it seemed like it all worked out it did yeah <laughs> yeah we it did we, we had a great strength coach 
Okay. I had some great coaches, Coach yeah. Shanahan, yeah. Uh, Mike Shanahan, mm -hmm. Kyle's dad. He was my offensive really? coordinator wow. there. Charlie Pell, who was under the great Bear Bryant. Yep. He was our head coach. So we had a lot of great coaches there. My offensive line coach was pretty good. So that kind of helped me. Plus, you know, we had to keep our weight at a certain, and you had to look a certain way. Now, Danny, for you to become part of the Great Wall of Florida, which yeah. I was, every one of us had to bench press 400 pounds, and we had to leg press 800 pounds. And I was the last piece of the Great Wall of Florida. They called me the last brick because I was strong as some of those guys that were – part of the offensive line so they were waiting on me and the last thing I, I had already did the 800 leg press but I was trying to get that 400 up and it was probably three or four games before the last game of the season I went in there and I put 410 up bench press oh, 410 pounds and they said the great wall of Florida is complete I was the last brick that had to go in that great wall, and I went in there. I am so impressed. Yes, I'm thinking you, about Danny. the Philip Bromley that I know right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, that. Yes, that. yeah. Could you oh, try again? okay. I'm sorry, Siri. Okay, I'm sorry. Siri. <laughs> That's incredible. Yes, yes. Wow. And Phil was stronger than me. Phil yeah. was. Yeah, we had a great. It, it was a great group of guys. Great That's group. incredible. Yeah, it was a great group. Yeah. What is your favorite memory from Florida? Probably us winning the SEC. We were the first team to officially win it. But, of course, you know on the NCAA, we got Sanchin. Yeah. And they took it from us. Now, I still got my ring. They okay, could never yeah. get that. So, I still got that, my man. ring. Oh, yeah. Because we were we were the first team to win the SEC and Florida history. But, wow. like I say, they were after our coach. So, we all got sanctioned. Mm -hmm. But I always remember we played Kentucky. We were, came back from Kentucky. And for um, floor of the field, the swamp was packed. I've heard great things about the swamp. Oh, you got to you got to partake. You I got know. to partake, partake in the swamp. So Danny, we're in the plane. So the pilot said that he wants us to see, you know, all the people in the swamp. So the pilot, he said, just Wait, stay why were in you in a seat. plane? That this was after Kentucky because we played in Kentucky and okay. had just won the SEC. Oh, in and everyone Kentucky. was waiting for you. Guys. Yes, and we came back. So he came and he banked the plane this way so everybody could see everybody in the stadium. Then he came back and he banked it that way so people on that side of the plane could see. Man, it was packed. It was full, man. That was probably one of my best feelings at Florida. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I love that. Okay, and then you go on to Detroit. I mean, um, we have to talk about you and Barry. The little, and Barry. little big the fella. Little, little yeah, big that's fella. my guy. I, I mean – how prolific, prolific is he as his former offensive lineman? Whew. Danny. Yeah. Oh, my. So, every time I say he's the greatest, everybody, they look, oh, yeah. Well, you're a bias. You blocked for him for seven of his ten years. But you would know. Yeah. Better than I Thank you. Yeah. They, but they look at me as being biased. But, yeah. Danny, I'm telling you, it's not the highlights that you could pull up on mm -hmm. YouTube that you see. The thing that used to impress me and Kevin Glover was the, mo the most was Mondays after the game when we had to go watch film and you sitting in the film room. And, Danny, I swear, every Monday, it, Monday, it would be like five plays. You would be like, oh, my goodness, how did he just do that? And it may not be a long run it yeah. might be a loss it might be a one yard run it might be a two yard loss but it's going to be the greatest one yard or two yard loss you've ever seen in yeah. your life and this was every monday he would make you say stuff like that he was just incredible and then the other thing about barry so humble mm -hmm. so so humble i blocked for him for seven of his 10 years and never once and you know he took a lot of losses mm -hmm. never once did i ever see him stand up and point at somebody and say it was your fault or you should have got this block or you should have did that never once did he ever do this so that would make you want to block for him harder yeah. you know that would make you want to take care of him because he was just a humble guy that was a good guy and then he was generous I mean mm -hmm. he would take care of the big fellas oh, oh yeah 
he was like one of the first ones to take really? care of the yeah, Rolex watches, the... a trip anywhere in the world that you want to go you, first class. Well, see, I missed that one. I didn't go anywhere. I know, Danny. I was tripping. I was tripping. I didn't even take advantage of that. Big screen TVs, when they weren't popular to have a big screen. That was when you big, big screens screen. cost you like ten thousand oh dollars back then. So he was just he would just take one year we told him, look, we don't want you to give us anything. We're gonna get you something. So us as an offensive line, we bought him something and everything. So it was just he was just a great, great guy. And man, I'm so happy. He made my career. I yeah. mean, he really did. I tell anybody that if it wasn't for Barry, because my first four years here, we didn't get on Monday night TV. We weren't on any national TV because we didn't have a draw. Why yeah. would anybody watch Detroit other than the Thanksgiving Day game? Mm -hmm. And that's how it was until we got Barry. Once we got Barry, everybody wanted to see us because mm -hmm. everybody wanted to see Barry. So the spotlight was on him, but he put the spotlight on the whole team. And I, it helped a lot of us reach all pro, pro bowls and different mm -hmm. things like that. So the little big fella, he has a place in the big Man, fella's heart. That yeah. is beautiful. Yeah. Do you remember what gift the, the offensive line got him? Yeah, so what, one year we bought what, like, him what a chain. What do you chain. buy Barry? See, and that's the thank Danny. And that was the biggest thing. Because yeah. Barry didn't. Here's a guy that had the Honda Accord. He kept that for like his first eight years in the league. And then when he did buy another car, he bought a used car. Man, he stayed in the house probably about the size of this little studio. You know what I'm saying? Clothing with nothing you would look at beer and say, oh, that looks good. I mean, he was just that way. So he's wow. very frugal, frugal. So we didn't know what to give him. He didn't wear jewelry, even though that's what we bought him. We bought him a chain and they had a medallion on it and everything. I don't even know if Barry he ever wore it. No, because he's not flashy. He doesn't do wow. things. So our biggest name was coming up with what did we want to get Barry, you know? Right. So yeah, so that was that was it. But great, just a great guy, great guy. I love that. Yeah, he's great. What is your favorite memory as a lion? My favorite memory is it's bittersweet, but it's 1991 mm -hmm. when you know right now, and I hate to say it, it's still the best season in Lions history mm -hmm. if we count the pre Super Bowl days, mm -hmm. which is bad. But it was the 12 and four season, and it was bittersweet because of what happened with Mike Utley getting paralyzed. But what Mike did, I mean, for him to be, I think, Danny, the thing that grabs me the most, for this man to be laying on a stretcher, paralyzed, can't move, and when they was wheeling him off, for him to give all 80,000 people in the Silverdome the thumbs up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know I when I tell people this all the time, I couldn't have handled that injury like he handled mm -hmm. it. I would have been a bitter, bitter person. Yep. I probably wouldn't have wanted to see people. But Mike was the complete opposite. I mean, I remember we went to see Mike like three days after he got paralyzed. We went up to the hospital to see him. And I remember us gathering up as a group. It was just an old lineman. And we said, all right, before we go in here to see Mike, we said, we're not going to talk about this. Don't bring this up. Don't discuss this. You know, it was things we just wanted to stay away from, you know, when we talked to Mike. Man, we walked in the room. He in there joking. You know, he's in there cracking. Yeah, I'm sitting up there. I'm like, oh, my God. Just he encouraging us. And here's a guy, like I say, he's paralyzing. He kept telling you, and he'll tell you this today if he sees you. He's still going to walk. This 30-something years later, and when I seen Mike a year ago, he's still telling me, yeah, man, I'm going to get up out this wheelchair. Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk. And I love the way he lives life now. He's been in a couple of car accidents. He skydives. He wore the skis. Yeah. Oh I'm like, man, I'm like, man, you got paralyzed and got crazy. We're like, what's <laughs> wrong with you? But but I'm glad he's living life, and uh -huh. he's living it to the fullest. And, and then – Eric Andelsack getting killed during that all season. So it was wow. the best year wow. we had, 12 and four, one game away from the Super Bowl. But in terms of what we lost with Mike getting paralyzed and then Eric getting killed during the all season, it's just, it was bittersweet. But that's the year that mm -hmm. I remember. That's the year, my fun wow. this year with the Lions. Wow.
2018, you come back to the Detroit Lions, more of a, a sort of full time role, taking over as color analyst yes. on the radio. Yeah, who is that something you'd always been? No, kinda, like, looking forward Danny, to? that whole thing was scary because I was supposed to be. We were supposed to start off as a three man booth. Okay. So it was supposed to be me, Dan, and Jim Brandstetter, mm -hmm. you know, and I was supposed to be learning on the gym because yeah. they knew Jim was probably going to retire in like two or three years, and then I would just roll into that position. All of a sudden, WJR had a change of plans. That, mm -hmm. Like, nope, you're going right in with Dan Miller. I had no experience. I'm like, oh, my God, mm -hmm. you know. So went in with Dan, and – I'm telling you, he makes it so easy. Oh yeah. my God, man. He he sets everything up for you. He is so good with what he does. It just relaxes you. And it, and he makes it easy for me. So the transition, I was nervous about it because Jim had had that position for 31 years. Wow. 31 years he was the guy. And here I am stepping in for this guy. I knew he had loyal, you know, loyal fans, that loyal following oh, yeah. that he had over these years. So it was a little bumpy at first, but again, it, it just worked out so smooth. And like I said, I thank Dan, and I also thank Jim Branstetter, and he gave me the go-ahead. He gave me the green light and said it was all right with him. That's when I felt that peace about the yeah. about what had happened, and it was only – once I talked to him and he was like, Lomas, go ahead, go do it. He's such a great, great guy. Man. Oh, he yep. is, man. Yep. He's one of my best friends. Him and his wife, Robbie Tennis. I grew up yeah. watching his is wife. She, I knew about awesome? his wife way before Thank I knew about Jim Brandsatter. Sorry, Daddy. I just, Same, she's I'm iconic. Just, is she awesome? Iconic. Robbie Timmons, yes. Iconic. Yes. Well, she was on Channel 7, right? Yeah, absolutely. For so many years. Icon. Yeah, she's awesome. I so that's that. a great family. Oh, yeah, yes. Okay. To wrap this up, is your 60th birthday coming up? Uh, wait, which one? Yes, yeah. Dang, like, they're coming fast. They're coming yeah, fast. Yeah, life comes at you real fast. Yes, March 30th, man. The big oh, fella, I changed the first number. Oh. I was used to having that five at the first number. Oh now God. I got to go with you the have six. The I know they're hand. huge. I know. That's how I, when I do my grandkids like that, they, they, they used run. to look at my hands like they're that. Like, yeah, holy. yeah, they're pretty. Man, and that's what my wife always tells me stop talking with your hands because that's people. what. She <laughs> She would always tell me that. Oh my God, just stop it with the hands because they're everywhere. Is that so, why you were so successful? Yeah, yeah. You just Dana, like kind of yes, because you got it, Danny. Huh? When you get them, when you grab them, you hold them. Like they're not and getting yeah, out of those dang, things right here. These meat hooks, they're not going meat anywhere hooks. once I once I get them in you. Holy they're not going smokes. anywhere. Yeah. What if they still call them meat hooks? I, you know, I know that, that might be an old school saying. Now you see, how I'm bringing the I'm old school him. back. Yeah, him. the hooks. How your the meat, meat hooks, hooks. doing? Yeah. Oh, wow. So no story for the 60th. Uh, you know, I'm going to take it easy. Okay. You know, they're coming so fast, Danny. I yeah. might do something odd. I might do 63. You know what I'm saying? I'm, it might be a big 63. Okay, that's and really then, random. See that look you gave me? Like, yeah, why? Like, yeah. No one will see it coming. There you go. I might have people puzzle. Wait, why not big 60? <laughs> why puzzle big on. 63? So, you know, yeah. I might come up. Because I like to throw people off a little bit. You can't keep them on the straight and narrow. You got to take them to the left or to the right sometime, Danny. Yeah. So, yeah, I might go 63. I agree. Yes. Wow. And that was a great year. That was the year I was born, too, 1963. Oh, my huh? gosh. Yes. See, we throwing them at them, see? I hate math. I'm making it rain with oh facts in here. With facts. See, I'm making it rain with facts in here. <laughs> I love this. That's all I got for you. Okay. Yeah, that was Anything else? That was painless, short and sweet. I'm yeah. talking to the people who are out there. Painless and short and sweet. You just listened to another episode of Off the Record with Danny Rogers. A new episode drops every Tuesday.